Welcome back, this is Mr. Cisneros. In the previous videos, we've learned how to use VCarve and RD Works to create a design that can be laser engraved. We also learned how to set up the laser engraver to cut our design. In this video, I will be showing you how to use your computer or PC at home to access Amazon Web Services so that you can use VCarve and RD Works at home. The way that we get started is by opening up a web browser. With the web browser open, go to Schoology. Once you're logged into Schoology, go to our course, Introduction to Engineering Design. At the very top of our course, you're going to see that we have a link, AWS PLTW Apps. You can click on this link. It will try to open the web page within Schoology, which brings you with an error. That's okay, you can click on the link at the top. Once you click on that link, you'll be presented with this web page. Oops, this link isn't working. That's okay as well. All you got to do is click on Go to Applications. Once you click on Go to Applications, that will take you to myapplications.microsoft.com where, you, where you'll be prompted with a login page. In order to log in, all you have to do is use your school email for your username and your school ID without the three zeros for your password. Again, your username is going to be your school email and your password is going to be your ID without the three zeros. Once you've logged in, this web page will show up with all the apps that are available to you. The app that you're looking for is D211 SHS. Go ahead and click on that. When you do click on this icon, Amazon Web Services AppStream 2.0 will open up. And this is where you have access to all the different programs that we have available in our lab. The two apps or programs that we're going to be focusing on today is VCarve and RDWorks. I'm going to start by opening up VCarve. When I click on this, it opens up instantly because I've loaded this already. For you, when you click on it, it might take about two minutes to load up. After about two minutes, this is what you'll see. I'm going to start by clicking on this Maximize button to make my window larger. And then I can get started. The reason I'm making a separate video here to show you these steps is because with Amazon Web Services, saving your files and downloading your files is a bit different. With Amazon Web Services, you have access to a folder called Temporary Files. These temporary files will delete after you've ended your session. So in this video, I'm going to show you how to access those files that you have saved in temporary files, and I'm going to show you how to bring it to the physical memory of your computer, laptop, or PC. This is how you get started. In vCarve, we're just going to go normally, like we normally would, and we're going to create a new file. I'm going to set my job size to 3 inch by 3 inch with a thickness of 0.125. I'm going to scroll down and click OK. Next, I need to find an image to bring in. So I'm going to go to Google and I'm going to search what kind of logo, design, or image I'd like to trace. This is the one that I want. I'm going to right click. I'm going to save image as and I'm going to save to my desktop. Once that image is saved in my desktop, I can go back to Amazon Web Services where vCarve is opened. With vCarve open, I'm first going to upload that image that I just downloaded from Google. I'm going to upload it to temporary files. My files or temporary files can be found under this folder icon. I'm going to click on this icon and this window will come up. You can see that we have temporary files available to us. I'm going to click on temporary files and then I'm going to go over to upload files. When you click on upload files, it will ask you what files you want to upload. The file that we want to upload is the PNG or JPEG that we just got from Google. So I'm going to look for that. It's right here. I'm going to click on this and then go to open. Once I click open, it will upload it to temporary files where we have access through vCard. So I'm going to close this window now that I've uploaded it. And I'm going to normally, like I normally would, import the image. I'm going to go to File, Import, Import Bitmap. Once I do that, you can see that the image is available for us to use. I'm going to click on this and I'm going to go to open. Now I'm going to trace the image. The way I trace the image is I'm going to use Trace Bitmap. This is a colored image, so I'm going to leave it set to color. 
a lot of the outline of this image and even the detail on the inside is black. So I'm going to click on the black square and then I'm going to scroll down and I'm going to click preview, apply, and then close. Once I do that, you can see that the image has been traced. I can delete the original image from Google. I'm going to click on a part that I know is the image and then I'm going to hit delete on the keyboard. All that's left are the lines that were traced. Now, what I do want is I want a border around this. So I'm going to create a rectangle, drag and drop. It looks like I did not leave enough room. So I'm going to try this again. I'm going to do Control Z to undo, and I'll try once more. I want to make sure that I'm able to fit this rectangle completely around my image. That's better. I'm going to let go. I'm going to apply, close, I'm also going to put a circle on the top right corner. It's going to be a keychain, so we need a hole for a key ring. Click and drag. Apply, close. You can also move your lines or your circles by clicking, double clicking, grabbing the middle, and dragging. That's better. Now what I'm able to do is I'm able to make a DXF. The way I do this is by selecting everything, making a big box around my design. Seems to be lagging a little bit. We can also try doing Control A to select everything. Control A on the keyboard is a shortcut for select all. Now what we can do is we can go to File, Export, DXF. We're going to want to save this to temporary files. So I'm going to name this initials underscore logo DXF. I'm also going to be saving an RLD, so I do want to differentiate the two pretty easily. So I'm going to just put DXF at the end so I know that that for sure is my DXF file. I'm going to hit Save. And now I'm ready to open up RDWorks. The way I open up a different program within the AWS is by going to the four squares on the top left. When I hover over that, all the different programs available to me show up. I can click on RDWorks. When you click on RDWorks, you'll notice that the language is not set correctly. The way you can set it to English is by going over to where it says I-O-U-H, clicking on it, going over to where it says language, and then clicking on English. Another thing that you might need to change are the units. You can see that by default millimeters are set for the unit. The way you change this to inch is by going to config, file parasetting, DXF unit is set to millimeter. We need to change that to inch. Unit type is set to millimeter. We need to change that to inch as well. Click OK. Now we can bring in our DXF. We can go to File, Import. You can see that the DXF is right here. Click, Open. And then the purpose of RDWorks is to be able to tell the laser which lines should be cut and which lines should be scanned. So what I like to do is I like to do a Control A to select all, and I make everything blue. I make everything a scan. You can see that the blue layer is actually set to a cut mode. So I'm going to quickly change that to scan. The way I do that is by double clicking where it says cut. This window will come up and under processing mode, you can see it's set to cut. If I hit this drop down arrow, I can change it to scan. Click OK. Now what I like to do is I just pick and choose what I know needs to be a cut. I know that the border needs to be cut and the circle for the hole needs to be cut as well. I'm going to change that to red. Last thing I need to do is make sure that my settings are correct for my scan and my cut. I can't really see my settings here. It's blocked by this window. So I'm going to close this smaller window here at the bottom by clicking on this X. Now I can see my settings for power and speed. For a scan, I know that my power should be 3030 and I know my speed needs to be 350. For a cut, 
I know that my power minimum and maximum need to be 80. And my speed needs to be 10. Once this is set, I'm pretty much ready to save. So what we're going to do is we're going to go to File, Save As. And we're going to give this a name as well. And we're going to save it to Temporary Files, Initials, Underscore, Logo. And at the end, I'm going to call this RLD. This way I know which one is my DXF and which one's my RLD. I'm going to hit Save. Now we're pretty much done. The last thing to do is to make sure that we're able to access those files the next day. Let's take a look at our temporary files. In temporary files, you'll see that we have the DXF, we have the RLD. Now the issue with AWS, Amazon Web Services, is that once we end our session here, once we end this session, all these files and temporary files will be gone. It will be erased. We won't be able to access them again. So what we need to do is we need to save these files to the physical memory of our computer. So then we can later upload it to Google Drive. We can later email it to a classmate or a teacher. The way that you download to the physical memory of your computer is by simply going over to the drop down arrow here. The RLD is really what we want because we set our scan and cut settings with power and speed. So the DXF isn't as important. You could download this one as well but the RLD is really what you want. So with the RLD, you can click on the drop down arrow over here, and then you can click on download. When you click on download, and if you're using Google Chrome, the file should appear at the bottom left. If you're using any other internet browser, it may look a little bit different, but it should still go to your download folder. I just recommend using Google Chrome because it's a bit easier to access your downloaded files. Once you've clicked download, again, it does go to your downloaded files. So what you can do is you can go to Internet, um, excuse me, you can go to File Explorer, which is this little yellow icon. And then you can go to your downloaded folder. So this is my downloads folder. You can see that I, I've done this quite a few times, um, but the RLD that we've saved, which will be this one, is in our downloads folder. So I can use this later on. I have access to it because it's now in the physical memory of my computer. To make sure you don't lose this, it's a good idea to maybe make a separate folder. You can choose to put it in your documents, you can choose to leave it on your desktop, it doesn't matter too much, but just make it sure that you put or create a folder that you know where it's located so you can easily access it you can easily save to it. So what I would recommend is maybe making a new folder, calling it PLTW, and then just dragging and dropping your RLD from your downloads folder to your PLTW folder. Now, if you ever need to upload this to Google Drive, if you ever need to send this to an email or to a classmate through email, you can easily do it because you have it now on the physical memory of your computer. Let me show you how you can upload to your Google Drive. All you need to do is go back to your internet browser, go to Google Drive, click on the plus new button, go to file upload, and then find your RLD that you've created. So we do have the PLTW folder here. There's the RLD. We can click open, and it should be uploaded to Google Drive. Now, you can also, in Google Drive, create folders. So before you do that, you can also choose to keep yourself a bit organized. You can see I have a PLTW folder here. You can create one yourself by going to New and then Folder. You can name it PLTW. And then to add to a specific folder, all you would have to do is open that up and then hit Plus. File Upload. And then you can click this folder or this file. Click open. I can update my existing and it should upload here. All right, now that you have your RLDs, you can see again, I've done this a ton of times to make sure it works properly. Um, but any of these RLDs are you know, available to share out to your classmates, to your teacher. The way that you can do that is by 
highlighting one of the files that's in your Google Drive, going to the three dots over here, and then going to, hmm, oh, it's actually over here. You can highlight your file, and then you can go to share. And then if you need to share it with anybody, you can type in an email, and you're done. All right, that's it for this video. See you in the next one. Thank you.